Okay, Squeaks, have you got all of your animals and clues ready to go? Oh, great, me too. Oh, hey there, it's a really snowy day here and Squeaks and I are sort of stuck inside for the day. But being stuck inside seemed like a great excuse to play our favorite game. Guess that animal. Do you remember the rules? Squeaks and I picked out some secret animals. We're going to take turns giving each other clues about our animals to see if we can guess what they are. And inspired by how snowy it is outside, we came up with a special rule. All of our animals have to be cold weather animals. Are you ready to play, Squeaks? Okay, I'll go first. My animal is a mammal and it's really big. It's not a polar bear, but that's a great guess. My animal only lives in the water. It's not a seal, but you're really close. Seals spend a lot of their time in the water, but they can also live on land. Okay, here's my last clue. My animal has a blowhole on top of its head. Oh, congratulations, that is right, a whale. A humpback whale to be exact. Oh, that's a great question, Squeaks. How do whales and seals and polar bears, for that matter, live in places that are so cold? Well, there are a few different ways these animals can stay warm. Let's check out this video to find out more. Oh, hey guys, we're just cooling off here reading about some cool polar animals. But have you ever wondered how animals can live in super cold places all the time? Animals like beluga whales, harp seals, emperor penguins, and polar bears. They certainly don't wear sweaters, but they're perfectly comfortable where they live. These animals are warm-blooded. That means their bodies stay the same temperature on the inside, no matter how hot or cold it is outside. Humans are warm-blooded too, and so are rats, but not squeaks. If you've ever had your temperature taken, then you know how the doctor uses a thermometer to take the temperature of your body inside. It's usually right around 37 degrees Celsius. Well, whales that live in cold waters need to have the same internal temperature as warm-blooded animals in any other part of the world, from about 35 to 42 degrees Celsius. But the cold water means they can lose heat really fast, and whales can't snuggle up into a ball, find shelter, or put on an extra sweater like we can. So how do whales stay warm? Blubber, and not just whales. Whales. Seals and walruses have it too. Blubber is a really thick layer of fat between an animal's skin and its muscles. Whales are almost totally covered in it, except for their fins, their flippers, and their flukes, also known as the whale's tails. And blubber is really special. It's not like the fat on humans and other animals. First of all, blubber is a lot thicker than fat. In dolphins, it can be just a few centimeters thick, but some kinds of whales, known as bowhead whales, can have a layer of blubber that's more than 30 centimeters thick. Whoa, that's a whole lot of blub. Blubber also feels different. It's more firm and springy than other fat. Finally, blubber is different because it just serves a different purpose than other fat. For people, fat is a way to store extra energy that we get from food. But for whales and walruses, blubber is like putting on a super thick winter coat. It traps their body heat inside their bodies and keeps it from spreading out into the cold water. With their special blubbery coat, whales can stay perfectly cozy in water that's two degrees below zero. That's below freezing. Okay, blubber is awesome, but what about other animals that live in cold climates that don't have blubber? What about polar bears? Polar bears have fat that's pretty similar to human fat, so it's not that useful for helping them stay warm. Instead, polar bears have two kinds of fur, a super thick inner layer and an oily outside layer called guard hair. The inner layer of fur traps their body heat as it leaves their skin, and the longer guard hair keeps the inside layer totally dry when they swim in the water. Together, these special fur layers keep the polar bear nice and warm. But this next animal doesn't have blubber or fur. Emperor penguins have a different cool trick to stay warm they use each other. During the coldest months in Antarctica, penguins huddle together to trap warm air between their bodies. Instead of standing alone and being totally exposed to the cold wind, the penguins squish together so they're surrounded by the body heat of other penguins. Of course, it's not so nice for the penguins on the outside of the circle, but the huddle is always moving. The cold penguins on the outside get to move to the center while the warm penguins in the middle move out to take their turn on the edge. Way to share, penguins. Animals have some pretty cool ways to deal with the cold, but since I don't have blubber, thick fur, or other penguins to snuggle with, I'm thankful for the fort, my sweaters, and my blankets. Okay, Squeaks, it's your turn. Hmm. Your first animal has antlers and hooves. Let's see. I have a few guesses, but give me another clue. 
your animal lives in the tundra, a really cold place in the far north where there's snow on the ground almost all year. I think I have a pretty good idea now, but let me hear your last clue. Okay. His animal has two different names depending on what part of the world it lives in. Okay, I think I got it. Your animal is a caribou, which could also be called a reindeer, right? Yes! Caribou are amazing. The tundra is a hard place to live, but they have all sorts of adaptations that help them stay warm and find food. Here's more about caribou. Who's ready for winter? Squeaks and I are. We're getting out our warm clothes and our boots. Getting ready for winter reminds me of an animal that's always ready for winter. Reindeer. I'm pretty sure you've heard of them before, but how much do you really know about them? To help boost your knowledge about one of our favorite winter animals, here are four fun things that you might not know about reindeer. First, they have more than one name. The animals that live in North America in places like Canada, Alaska, and Greenland are called caribou. But the Animals that live in Northern Europe and Asia are called reindeer. Their names come from different languages from different parts of the world. So whether you hear this animal called a caribou or a reindeer, it's still the same animal. And they all live in the same general part of the world, way up north. And the environment where many reindeer live has a special name, the tundra. The tundra is a very cool place. And when I say cool, I mean cold. The places where we find tundra are some of the coldest on Earth. There are seasons there, just like anywhere else, but they all feel pretty cold. Even during the summer, temperatures don't usually get above 10 degrees Celsius. It doesn't rain very much in the tundra either. Instead, the ground is covered with snow for most of the year, and it's almost always frozen just a few centimeters below the surface. This means that there aren't a lot of big plants to eat. But don't worry, reindeer can still find plenty of food. That's because these animals use their big hooves to dig through the snow. Reindeer hooves are hollow underneath, kind of like a shovel. So reindeer can scoop the snow out of the way to uncover small plants like moss. Then it's time for dinner. In fact, the other name for reindeer, caribou, actually means snow shoveler. Okay, ready for another fun fact? Reindeer don't mind the cold at all. Even though you and I would find life in the tundra to be downright chilly, for reindeer, it's perfect. That's because their bodies are adapted to live in the cold. Adapted means that an animal has things that help it to survive where it lives. Like reindeer's hooves are adapted to help it find food under the snow. Reindeer also have a super thick coat that has two layers, a fuzzy layer close to the skin that helps keep it warm and dry, and a thicker outer layer that's more like our hair. But each little hair is hollow, like a straw. The air that fills each hair keeps heat next to the reindeer's body. Even a reindeer's nose is adapted to the cold. Reindeer noses are big and wide, and they have a special space inside of them. This space does two things. First, it helps warm up the air that they breathe in, and it also helps them hang onto the heat in the air that they breathe out. Have you ever noticed when you're outside on a cold day that you can see your breath? Well, when you see that little bit of white steam coming out of your mouth and nose, it's because warm, moist air is leaving your body. But when reindeer breathe out, they don't see their breath as much as we do, because they keep more of that heat inside. Try this and you'll see what I mean. Cup your hands over your nose and mouth. Now breathe out. Do you feel your hands getting warm? That's a little bit like what a reindeer's nose does. It lets the reindeer keep that heat. And when you live in the tundra, every little bit of heat helps. Okay, one more fun fact about these amazing animals. Reindeer are great travelers. If you watched our video about migration, you learned that big groups of reindeer travel over long distances every year. They take these big trips to places where it's warmer and to places where it's safe to have their babies. Some reindeer can walk over 5,000 kilometers in one year. That's a seriously long way to go. No other land animal moves as far in a single year. Okay, my next animal is really clumsy on land, but is a fast and graceful swimmer. Oh, it's not a walrus. My animal also has wings, but it can't fly. Oh, you think you know, huh? Okay, one last clue. My animal has black and white feathers that sort of make it look like it's wearing a fancy tuxedo. 
<laughs> yes, I was thinking of a penguin. More precisely, an emperor penguin, which is a species of penguin that lives in Antarctica. When we think of penguins, we usually think of them living in places where it's cold and snowy, like the Antarctic. But there are lots of different species of penguin, and lots of them live in places where it's warm. It's true! Let's watch this video to learn more about these peculiar penguins. When we talk about animals, we often talk about them like they're all the same thing, like elephants or giraffes or spiders or even rats. But for almost any animal you can think of, there are actually many separate kinds or species, and they can be really different even though they're all the same type of animal. Take, for example, one of the world's most interesting and cutest sorts of birds, penguins. They're birds! that can't fly. And they usually live near water because they spend a lot of their time hunting for fish and other things that live in the ocean. Also, they all live in the southern hemisphere. Those are important things to have in common, but that doesn't mean that all penguins look like this. The fact is, there are at least 18 different species of penguins, and they can be found many places. And they each look and even act a little different from one another. Some of the coolest penguins are probably ones you've never even heard of. So let's meet them. First stop, Australia and New Zealand, home to the tiniest of the penguins. Meet the little blue penguin. Its name comes from the fact that it's, well, little and kind of bluish, and sometimes called the fairy penguin. These minis are the smallest species of penguin in the world. They stand about 30 centimeters tall, which is around the size of the average sheet of paper, and they weigh about one kilogram, not much more than a big heavy book. I know, adorable. Little blue penguins live in big groups called colonies, and each pair of mother and father penguins digs its own burrow or underground nest. These little guys stay in their colonies year round, going out to hunt for fish during the day and then walking back to their burrows after the sun sets. In some places in Australia and New Zealand, you can even visit a little blue penguin colony in the evening and watch the penguins parade back home. Now let's meet another colorful penguin from New Zealand. Say hi to the yellow-eyed penguin. Besides the light color of its eyes, there's another Another unique thing about this bird, where it lives. All penguins have to live close to a body of water where they hunt for food. In cold places, penguins often live on thick sheets of ice. In warm places, many penguins live on sandy beaches. Now, the yellow-eyed penguin does spend some of its time on the beach, but it mostly lives in the woods. When it's not hunting in the beach or in the water, the yellow-eyed penguin lives in the forest along New Zealand's coasts. It builds its nest against rocks or tree trunks to get protection from bad weather and predators. How cool would it be to see a penguin waddling through the woods? Now let's head on over to Africa to meet our next penguin, the African penguin. Unlike most penguins, the African penguin, sometimes called the Blackfoot penguin, doesn't need to worry about freezing temperatures. That's because it lives on the islands and shores between Namibia and South Africa, where it can get really hot. Another cool thing about African penguins is that they sound a whole lot like a very different kind of animal. The loud noises they make have often been compared to the call of a donkey. Wow, who knew penguins could be so different from one another? Okay, Squeaks, this is the last one, go ahead. Okay, your animal is a mammal and it's not very big? Hmm, well, that doesn't really narrow it down much. Oh, it changes how it looks depending on the season. In the winter, it has a thick white coat, and in the summer, it has a shorter brown coat. Interesting. Is it an Arctic hare? Ooh, darn! But I'm close. Oh, and your animal is a carnivore, meaning it eats meat. I think I know. Is it an Arctic fox? Yay! Arctic foxes and Arctic hares change their coats depending on what season it is to help them blend in with their environment and to help them keep warm. And there are other animals with special winter coats too. Let's find out more. One of the best parts of winter is curling up with a blanket and a cup of hot cocoa, watching the snow fall outside while you stay nice and warm. But what do animals do when it gets cold? They don't have blankets, hot cocoa, or heated houses like we do. Well, different animals have different ways of dealing with the winter weather. Some animals migrate or move to a warmer place for the winter. And some of them hibernate or hang out in their cozy dens underground. They don't come out until it's warm again. But other animals don't migrate or hibernate, and they manage to live in places with really cold winters. But how do they do it? Well, they've come up with a pretty cool way to fit in with their snowy environment. I'll give you a hint. 
it involves a winter coat. Not a jacket with buttons or a zipper like you or I might wear. Instead, they have fur and feathers that cover their bodies when it gets cold. When the days get shorter, these animals shed their brown or gray colors and grow white fur or feathers to help them make it through the winter. Let's meet some of these color-changing animals and find out how their special coverings help them survive the chilly season. First up is the Arctic fox. The Arctic fox gets its name from where it lives in the Arctic. The Arctic is located at the most northern part of the world, around the North Pole. Arctic foxes live on the land and sea ice where they hunt birds and other small animals. But they don't always look the same from season to season. When the days get shorter and colder, their coats get thicker and whiter. This is what an Arctic fox looks like in the spring. And this is what it looks like in the winter with its winter coat. The most important thing about the fox's winter coat is that it keeps the animal warm. With its extra thick fur coat and bushy tail to wrap around its body, the Arctic fox is better at holding onto its body heat than nearly any other Arctic animal. But their fur does more than just give them warmth. Their white coat also camouflages them or helps them blend in with their surroundings. Blending in with the snow lets the foxes sneak up on their prey, like Arctic hares and small birds, and it also helps them hide from bigger animals that might want to sneak up on them. But when the seasons change, so do their coats. In the summer, Arctic foxes shed their white coats and grow new ones that are brown or gray to blend in with their surroundings after the snow is gone. Now things can get tricky for the Arctic fox because one of the animals that it likes to eat, the Arctic hare, uses some of the same tricks to survive the winter. Arctic hares also live you guessed it, in the Arctic, mostly in forests. And like the foxes, they have thick white coats of fur to keep them warm, plus pads of thick hair on the bottoms of their feet. Now some Arctic hares live further south, where there's less snow. So they actually grow darker coats that help them blend in in those environments where there are more rocks and plants than there is snow. No matter where they live though, Arctic hares like to keep their fur clean. So they groom themselves like cats do by licking their fur. The cleaner their fur is, the warmer it keeps them. Our last animal with a winter coat doesn't have fur at all. It's a bird called a ptarmigan. The ptarmigan lives in the Arctic too and can often be found hiding in bushes or behind rocks to avoid predators. They have feathers that change from brown in the summer to white in the winter to help camouflage them from bigger animals. Their soft, fluffy feathers are pressed close to their skin, trapping in their body heat and keeping the birds toasty warm in the snow. They also have extra feathers on their legs and feet to help keep them warm. And ptarmigans have other ways of staying warm in the winter too. Sometimes they'll fly straight into a pocket of powdery snow. This makes a little burrow or tunnel in the snow that they can snuggle up in, kind of like the fort. Whether it's an extra thick coat to help keep them warm or white fur and feathers to keep them out of sight, when it comes to living in winter, these Arctic animals have it covered. All right, Squeaks, that is all of our clues. Let's find out from the fort's computer who won. And wouldn't you know it, it's another tie. We both know a lot about animals, huh? How about as a reward, we go and make some hot chocolate? Then we can get nice and cozy on the couch and we can finish that book that we've been reading. The next time it's really snowy where you live, you can play Guess That Animal too. Just pick some animals, make up some clues, and you're ready to play. If you want to keep learning and playing with me, Squeaks, Mr. Brown, and all of our friends, hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time here at the fort.